What's up, spectators? Welcome back to the episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Duel Destinies. We have just begun the first trial, and the detective here is giving us a lovely recap of what happened. I'll go ahead and do a quick 30-second re recap if I can. The body was murdered on October 24th at night between 6 and 8 p.m. in the art room on the third floor of the building. Then, it was discovered the next day, just before the trial, at the quad. That's what it is. What? Then that would mean... What would that mean? Those three students were the only ones who could have moved the body. It just... I don't like where this is headed, Athena. Me neither. And by those three, I mean... Hugh O'Connor, Robin Newman, and Juniper Woods. I knew it. Please, Detective Fulbright. Don't say what I think you're about to say. Uh, I take it everyone understands now. The voice believed to be that of the murderer was female. And out of the three people who could have moved the body, just one is a girl. Look at him, all his punches. That leaves the defendant Juniper Woods as the only possibility. No. Wait. Please. Impressive. He has you on the ropes even before any cross-examinations. You could at least pretend to be upset for me. A splendid job, Fulbright. That could not be any clearer. Feel free to anticipate a salary raise next month. <laughs> I don't do this for the money. It's all about justice. I feel like he can make a very good cereal with that slogan. I don't know why cereal. Candy bar works too. Hmm, not only a half-wit, but a perennial stick in the mud you are. I guess neither the carrot nor the stick works on Detective Fulbright. Now, Bailiff, please, I'll say please, please bring out our next witness to the stand. Yay, it's a uh, curry butt, scuttle butt, that's it. Ugh, curry butt, that'd be a disgusting name. Oh. So our first witness is a cardboard box. Come on, Buttle Scut. Cock! <laughs> oh, I am an eight-year-old at heart. I am not sissing for you. Stealth mode deactivated. Oh my! The box has hands. Smile, your hunter. Repeated S's. What the dickens? I've just had my picture taken. Miriam Scuttlebutt, senior at the Legal Academy. I'm a reporter on the judge course. Juniper's been a bad, bad girl. I'll tell you all about her crime. More S's. Oh, might I ask whether you could come out of that box? How will I get any more scoops if I blow my cover? So, the answer is no. After all, covert action is an undercover reporter's bread and butter. Hmm, but testimony from a faceless witness is highly irregular. A former ninja I met in the clink said that exposing those who work in the shadows is to pass the death sentence upon them. Oh my! I never had never thought of it that way. Very well, if it would spare life, I'll make a special exception this time. A former ninja in prison. Holy Shinto! How can the judge believe this load of cock? I can't resist. I'm sorry. Now your testimony, please. Oh, but take care not to reveal your face. The similarity of the case and the script. The murder happened exactly like Juniper's mock trial script. Up until the mock trial began, only Professor Court and Juniper knew the script's content. But Professor Court's sudden decision not to use the script sparked Juniper's murderous rage. <coughs> <coughs> Juniper has to be the killer. She has a motive and the murder is just like her script. Whew, that was a... Whew. The murder is just like her script. Could such a thing be true? Compare her script with a murder case and the crime scene photos, then you'll see. This is so simple. Even an ape posing as a decrepit old judge could understand. Only the victim and the defendant were privy to the script. Ergo, the defendant is the killer. Furthermore, in the art room where the crime supposedly occurred, this witness script, witnesses script, 
along with an envelope on which use was written were found. This proves that the accused script had been rejected the day before the mock trial. She pressed the victim to use her script, an argument ensued, and then the fatal stabbing. That makes perfect sense. What now? Prosecutor Blackwell has all his ducks lined up in a row. He's really on a roll now. Ugh, he's like a pit bull once it sinks its teeth into you. How dare she! My script had it all! A bum rap and phony evidence, grudges and betrayals. Oh, that reminds me of bum rap Riney. Wow, that was 61 episodes ago. 61 episodes, 60... Wow, that would have been 12 weeks. Whew, okay. Hmm, I trust the defense is ready to cross-examine the witness? No problem. I mean, yes, I'm ready, I think. Time to find a hole in her testimony and unbox the truth. That was very cheesy. Well done. I've seen it done over and over. I know I can do this. Bum, bum, bum. Yep, yep, go. The murder happened exactly like Juniper's mock trial script. Hold it! There must be places where the script and this case diverge. Cock! Cock! Don't sweat the details. That kind of stress will give you wrinkles. Objection! I'm not worried. My skin is as fair as silk. Objection! So is his. So is everyone's. Except the judge. Poor judge. He's probably like 150. <laughs> Indeed, you are quite fair. Fairly desperate. <laughs> what did you just say? Ha 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 ha. Black Holy turned that one on around on you. Whose side are you on? Hurry up and think of a clever comeback. Whoa, easy there, Athena. Now you listen to me. The two cases do indeed have their differences. For one, the stage hadn't yet been erected in the mock trial script. And in the actual case, there were signs indicating the victim's wrists had been bound. But such differences pale in comparison to the host of similarities. In any event, replicating the crime without knowledge of the script is an impossibility. Hmm. Looks like I won't be passing this off as a coincidence. What a total burn! Try again, why don't you, Pawn of Woods? Up until the mock trial began, only Professor Court and Juniper knew the script's content. Hold it! Somebody could have stolen a peek beforehand. I don't think so. I mean, I tried any number of times. Shame on you, Miriam. But that crafty she devil Juniper has eyes in the back of her head. What chance does your average person have if an undercover reporter like me failed? Interesting point. Still, Miss Scuttlebutt, won't you get in trouble later for admitting to such underhanded tactics? Why you, I plead entrapment. How is you blurting out your own crime entrapment? Cock! But you haven't scooped me yet. They were all set to use Juniper script. But Professor Court's sudden decision not to use the script sparked Juniper's murderous rage. Hold it! How do you know that Professor Court wasn't going to use her script? <laughs> there in the art room where the heinous, heinous crime took place. An envelope to mark use and Miriam Scuttlebutt's script were found. Evidently, the script that was going to be used belonged to the girl in the box over there. It's only natural that my script would be accepted and hers rejected. I introduced all sorts of brand new concepts, including bribery and fake evidence. It was a cutting edge script portraying a courtroom battle in the dark age of the law. I can't help but feel Professor Court went out of her way not to use it. But Juniper, she used some devious underhanded tactics to get her script chosen. That's why her script and not my masterpiece was used in the mock trial. How's that for an explanation? Juniper has to be the killer. She has a motive and the murder is just like her script. Hold it! Anyone who saw the mock trial could have recreated the crime. After they saw the mock trial, they could have easily staged the body just like the script. 
Objection! <laughs> Weary is the trial which pits Hawk against Canary. Objection! Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, did you just say? Ha 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 ha. If he's so wary, he should try humphing less. I bet that saves some energy. This is no time for jokes, Apollo. He just called me a canary. Don't let him get to you. At least canaries pick up on things quickly, just like you. I shan't repeat myself, so listen carefully, Sykes Dono. Hugh O'Connor discovered the body before the mock trial even began. How could one stage the body as it is it it whew, that was hard to read the body as it is in the, the script Jesus Christ in the script before anyone knew its contents Gah, that's right do you even fathom the intricacies that go into staging a crime scene no I think not you have the rudimentary mind of an elementary school child elementary school Reporter's testimony throws attorney Athena Sykes for loop. The perfect caption. How marvelous! A photo in the newspaper is just the thing to boost your brand. In a school paper? Seriously? I believe you've pressed the witness more than enough, Miss Sykes. <laughs> now do you see how clear cut my case is? Take it now, and in that fair, desperate mind of yours. Catch it deep so you may never forget. No, no. Even my argument gets thrown back in my face. It wasn't supposed to be like this. Not like this. What am I going to do? Athena, you should just about have all the answers you've been looking for now. What? Think about it this way. If the killer knew the details of the mock trial, would they really commit the crime in the exact same way? I don't follow. Try to place yourself in the killer's shoes. I bet you'll discover an inconsistency if you do. Ah, I get it. Thanks, Apollo. Miss Scuttlebutt, just so we're clear, you're claiming that the killer intentionally made the crime scene look just as it was in the script. And that it is beyond the shadow of a doubt not a coincidence, is that correct? No, duh. After all, it's just more evidence of Juniper's evil she-devil ways. Objection! More cocks! What did I say? Our client made the crime scene look just like the script, something known only to her. That would be not just foolhardy, but completely irrational. What do you mean? Yes, Miss Sykes. Please tell this court what you mean by irrational. Games. Studio. It wouldn't make any sense for Judy to mimic her own script on purpose because it would make her the culprit. Duh. So obvious. God. So stupid. The murder scene was the same as it was in the mock trial script. That in and of itself is irrational. What's wrong with them, but the same. Yes, Miss Sykes. Care to explain what you mean? Okay, let's say for argument's sake that Miss Woods is the killer. If so, then... What reason would you have to intentionally make the actual murderer mimic her own script? That's easy. She was admitting that she was the... Ah. Uh. That's right. If she had really done that, it would have been like proclaiming to the world that she was the killer. So what we actually have here is evidence of someone trying to frame our client. Cack. It's like a staples in there. My body, oh, my body. The body was found the day of the mock trial. In short, the day of the details were revealed. So it would be completely inconceivable for the murder to go exactly like the script. Don't let it get to your head just yet. Objection. <laughs> I would, uh, yep, no, I was right. I would seem Justice Dono's comrade in arms has finally drawn her sword. Oh, so it is a typo, it's only it. However, the blade is dull and it shall remain so until you master its use. Enough with the stupid sword metaphors already. It's a lot of phallic metaphors indeed. A lot of homoeroticism. Hmm, very suspicious. Let me drink some lemonade. Give me five seconds. 
There is a perfectly good reason for the inconsistency of which you speak. Reason? What reason? Must I spell out everything? Pfft. You are what people today call high maintenance. The accused had intended to stop the mock trial, and in that event, nary a soul would have been the wiser to the similarities of the case and script. Objection! No! The mock trial was only stopped after the body was accidentally discovered. Objection! Our witness here had also discovered the body. In fact, she has led to our dearly departed professor by the accused herself. What? Miss Scuttlebutt saw the body too? Precisely. And with the discovery of the body, the mock trial ought to have been cancelled. Wait, so you didn't call the police? Nope! I kept it a secret from my big scoop. You can't do that! I made her pay long and hard penance for her sin, did I not, my little box top? Ooh, that is dirty. What did you do? Why is she always screaming about cocks? Ooh, no wonder you're a convict. Compared to the work of a war correspondent, the sheer terror of that was. Oh, jeez, I wonder what the Twisted Samurai did to her. Block off all the holes in her box? Oh! Oh, stop! That is so... <laughs> Woo -hoo! And spin her like a top while Detective Fulbright cackled in delight. These people are sick! That sounds more nauseating than scary. Enough jabbering. Witness, continue your testimony. Sure, Mr. Samurai. Aye, aye, aye. I'm ready to finish off that she-devil. You're my little butterfly. What Scuttlebutt saw. I snuck into Juniper's dressing room while everyone was in the lecture hall. Juniper changed into her stage costume. I asked her, what are you doing? When suddenly she fled into the hallway as if she wanted me to follow her. I followed her all the way to Professor Court's body. She led me right to it. I'm positive it was Juniper because she was wearing the costume that she had made. Why did you withhold such key testimony? <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Athena, you haven't even started your cross-examination. I know, but her testimony points to her as being a potential suspect. Well, I don't think Professor Black... Professor Blackwell... Ugh. Prosecutor Blackwell is... No, wait. I bet he's already thought of that. The witness left the lecture hall to sneak into Miss Woods' room before the mock trial. That means she, too, could have moved the victim's body. The prosecution's claim no longer has any ground to stand on. Help! Now, now, no need to ruffle your own feathers, so. When you squeak like a little brat, it agitates Taka. Do you want him to peck your eyes out? That sounds lovely. You listen here. The witness has a perfectly good alibi. Oh yeah, I do! Around the estimated time of death, I was at undercover reporter class. It's right near my home. Undercover reporter class. The proverbial rug has been pulled from under you. The witness could not be the killer. The defense must look before leaping, or at least make sure the rug's secured to the floor. I tried to warn you. Ooh, Captain Hindsight over here. Ooh. Well, there ends the cross-examination. Let's allow the witness to step down. Huh? No, wait a minute. The defense has no right to cross-examine the witness after that little spectacle. For whatever a man is sowing, this he will also reap. Ugh. Why can't he say, you reap what you sow? Hmm, very well. If the cross-examination is over, I suppose the witness may go home. Perhaps spend some time in our lovely box and recover from today's stressful events. Don't you worry about me, your honor. There's no rest for the wicked, or journalists either. My third eye is always eyeing a scoop. She's always eyeing a scoop? Of poop? Well, back to the trenches. Bye bye You can't steal my buh-bye. You cardboard wench! 
Ooh, something exciting. But it's too late, because it's already been over 20 minutes, so you'll have to stay tuned tomorrow. So thanks for watching, and bye bye They're catching us in a crossfire, shouted Billy. Get to the other side. Faster, faster.